Yeah! Long awaited video here. I wanted to give a little more description behind my back training. It's almost a need for me to do this, uh, you know, after so many requests and my desire to help. So I've put together a video to show you guys a bunch of different clips um, and to give myself enough time to give you a little bit of an explanation of what I do for my back training. I've been able to develop my back very strongly over the years. Um, keep in mind I've been training for about seven years now, naturally, and uh, it's nothing you can do to you know beat out time. So if you're a new lifter, there's only so much you can do. Just be patient and just make the steps every day in order to get where you need to be in the future. But uh, regardless, if you implement these things and you pay attention to what I'm saying here, it might help you out for your back training. So nothing comes overnight. Pay attention um, and hopefully some of this stuff can help you guys. It's crucial to hit the back from every single different angle and you'll see here um, pretty much 99% of the exercises that I've done over the past seven years um, religiously to help uh, build and structure my back. I'll give you some tips and tricks and mental cues and things that I think of while I train back while you look at this footage. You'll see footage of me kind of um, in bulk mode and then some clips of me shredded. Uh, so hopefully you can enjoy and you can just see um, over the years just some things I've done and hopefully you can learn something. So check it out. Dead lifts. <laughs> this is the most fundamental, crucial compound exercise to do for your posterior chain, hands down, meaning your backside, your entire backside. Um, this is huge for the back, but there's so much to this exercise that I can't really explain it in this video for the sake of time. But make sure that you do these properly because this is the lift that you lift ridiculous amounts of weights with once you get good at it and there's nothing worse than doing that with improper technique and hurting yourself so what I can do is I'll stress the starting position of the deadlift um, just so that at least you can start it correctly you should watch other videos on the lift itself on the Legend of Aesthetics website coming soon but check this out right here I've paused it look at my starting position you have to Make sure that you take out the slack, meaning there's no bend in your elbows and there's no unneeded bend in your knees aside from what it takes to hinge and grab the bar before you start. From there, make sure that from the ground up, your knees are lower than your hips and your hips are lower than your shoulders. Your shoulders do not need to be in front to back alignment with your knees. They should be a little bit out in front of your knees. Uh, spine should be neutral and this should give you a proper starting point for the deadlift. From there, you're ready to keep your hips back, keep the tension in the hamstrings and back and pull. This is called a rack pull. It's basically a partial deadlift that starts right below the kneecap and it helps you emphasize the deadlift motion just in the back. This allows you to work with more weight than what you would normally do for a deadlift and because of that you're able to get gains that you normally wouldn't get on a normal deadlift. Vertical pulls, aka up and down, aka knock side to side. <laughs> Generally speaking I start my back workouts with a vertical pull versus a horizontal pull because when I do them in this order I'm able to have enough in the tank to do my horizontal pulls afterwards whereas when it's the other way around that's not the case so here you can see I'm warming up with a underhand narrow grip which works the biceps a little bit more along with the back and you'll see in the next clip I also do a overhand wider grip which works more predominantly the back this is a warm-up set so you'll see I'm not swinging around too much but here in this next set you'll see I'm, I'm doing some working weight and I'm actually hinging at the waist and allowing myself to tilt back a little bit and what that allows me to do is get a heavier weight all the way down and work with a heavier eccentric meaning the way up so that part of the motion is just as important as the way down so if you don't give yourself a little bit of motion you're not going to be able to work with that heavier weight the next most crucial uh, you know, vertical pull. I wouldn't say they're really in order. These these are actually you know as effective if if you prefer to do pull-ups. But uh, I 
this is an example of a you know weightless pull up, and you can obviously add weight to do weighted pull ups. Um, the main thing I want to emphasize about pull ups here is that you'll notice my chin doesn't go over the bar. Most people emphasize that, but what that normally does is it overemphasizes the use of the shoulders and it takes away the emphasis on the lats. So I generally keep my chest up and actually look to get my chest towards the bar versus actually trying to get my chin over. So that's a big, big, big tip, guys. I've paused it here so you guys can see my chest is actually going towards the bar versus aiming to get my chin over the bar. You're never going to get your chest to actually touch the bar, but that should be your outlook when you're doing it. Towards the end, your chin might want to go over a little bit just because of tendencies and you know what you see and what you normally aim to do, but you should really keep your head out of the motion and try to get your chest up towards the bar. This will really make the exercise a little bit more difficult, uh, but that's okay because the emphasis is predominantly where it needs to be. This will make your normal pull-ups as well as your weighted pull-ups more challenging, but trust me when I say if you're able to keep your scapula retracted, your chest up, and the emphasis in the lats, you're going to feel it 10 times more, so that's a huge tip for you guys. Here you'll see a set of me shirtless uh, leaner while we were in the UK, and I'm pausing at the top of each rep so you guys can really see what I mean. You'll notice my chin is not going over the bar, and that's not my goal. I'm kind of tilting back, and I'm using my lats to pull myself up right there. Pause. You see it on this next one, big pull, pause. So I'm kind of tilted back and I'm really just using the muscles that I should be, guys. Horizontal pulls, aka side to side, aka not up and down, aka the way that girl slits her wrist when she wants attention instead of actually killing herself. Cheers! Alright guys, so as you can see here, I'm stacked as fuah! Is that Chris Lovato or Ronnie Coleman? Cheers! Anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, I've been incorporating these uh, so-called yucky cable rows recently. Very good motion. I'm balancing, doing them one arm at a time. It just feels better. The only reason I'm rotating my arm when I pull is because that's what comes natural when it comes to contracting the lats. You can see here through my shirt that my muscles are just bulging out. But anyway, that's besides the point. I'm able to get a really good stretch and a really good contraction when I do these one-handed. Um, remember, when you do rows, as you see in these next few clips, you're pulling for your back. You're not pulling for your shoulders or your grip strength or your biceps in particular, right? You want to grow your back. So feel it in the back predominantly, right? This is another variation of row that I've done over the years a lot. Uh, it's a seated cable row. You guys probably have these in your gym. Um, but what I like to do is I like to use these for lower lat activation, meaning pulling a little bit more for the lower part of the back. And I do that by sitting on something that's pretty much as high as a dumbbell would be if you sat it upright on a, on a bench. You can do that. It's a good improv way to do it no matter what gym you're in. So here I am. You can't really see the thing underneath me, but I'm about a foot higher than the actual bench itself. As you can see, I'm using my Versa grips again, and I'm letting myself tilt forward and back a little bit by hinging at the waist and keeping my spine neutral, allowing me to use more weight more effectively. If you do things properly like this, you'll notice in the background, Jeff Saad be modern. Fuck that shit, I'm too thorough. Pretty nigga, my shoes go. Pinky ring in my tooth go. Yo, main bitch is my new hoe. Boss nigga like you go. Rolex or the Q blow. Niggas taking my screw flow. They trying to jack it like new clothes. Purple drink, make me move slow. Same shit, different day. Oh, oh. Oh, wait, oh, oops. So here we have traditional dumbbell rows being done on a bench. You can see here the range of motion isn't exactly too long. You don't have to emphasize the stretch or the squeeze here. It's all about the focus on the lat for this. You can see I'm also using Versa grips and or straps in most of my working sets because I think you're stupid to hold your potential back for your back when your grip can't handle the weight, right? You're not allowing yourself to use the weight that your back needs to grow just because of stupid grip strength or something. You're not a pussy if you use straps. That's my take. Anyway, I'm going to pause right here. Okay, you can see that I'm holding the weight here and I'm about to start my row. My lat is actually fully engaged here. That's the biggest tip I can give you guys. Before you start, before you pull, in order to make sure your lat is engaged the whole time you're doing your set of rows, make sure that when your arm is the, in the extended position, your lat is already activated. From there, it should not be unactivated until you set the weight down at the end of the set. That's a crucial thing because a lot of times people don't know if their lats are activated or not. So here we go, let's finish the set. 
one last thing to point out, I can wear pretty much any clothes combination and look ridiculously sexy. I don't even know what can make me look ugly. Probably nothing. Alright, so first things here, I want you guys to try your hardest not to focus on my ridiculously sexy hamstring and uh, focus on the row going on here. You can see I'm doing it on the, on the dumbbell rack instead of the bench, so by default my angle is a little bit more than horizontal, but very similar to what it would be on the bench. My core is activated a little bit tighter here, but I just feel like this variation of a row is not better, but it just gives a little bit more range of motion, and it's a good substitute for when you're too lazy to take the dumbbell to the bench. Um, don't do this and block people's way in the gym, do it when the gym's empty, but it's very similar to the other row, and you might find that it's more comfortable for you, or that you can contract your lat a little bit easier doing it this way. I don't like having my feet too far staggered, although I do like having them a little bit wider than shoulder width from left to right. Staggered means front to back, right? Not, not too staggered. So this is just another variation I like to do. Here's another attempt at me trying to look ugly, but it just wasn't working for me. Anyway, I'm about to do a barbell row here, and as you can see, my technique is a little bit different from normal. I don't bend over all the way horizontal because no homo, and secondarily, I like to do it from my upper back. So I stop right there. My angle is pretty considerable, as you can see. Hands are underhand, about shoulder width. And I really, really feel this in my upper back, almost up in my traps as well. I recommend you guys do it this way. As you can see, I'm dragging the bar across my thighs, literally touching my thighs. So try that. Keep the spine straight. Make sure you're not hurting yourself. But it should be a good variation for you. Now, if you're alpha enough to have this at your gym, I recommend doing it one-handed. The reason I do it one-handed is because when I do it two-handed, there's not enough weight on the machine. All right, just joking. But one-handed, I notice there's a lot more range of motion that you can get out of this, this particular machine. And because of that, a much, much better contraction, uh, even though you're working with heavier weights. So give that a try. Diagonal pulls. Let's be real, guys. This is like the kid in elementary school that got picked last for basketball, but he had to get picked anyway in order to get full teams. If you want to get a full back, you got to hit diagonal pulls too. I like to do this diagonal pull. Uh, one-handed as well. Um, as you can see, I use Versa grips in some cases. Some cases I don't. It just depends on the weight. Don't be afraid to use them. Um, I like to have my shoulder blades retracted, um, uh, avoiding the shrug at all times. And that should be the case for all poles. And really using this one-arm technique to emphasize the range of motion. You're able to kind of twist your torso a little bit at the very end to get more of a contraction. So that's a tool to use in order to... Uh, Take your, take your back game to the next level. Um, I'm going to use the rest of this time during this set to explain to you guys my mental cues that go through my mind no matter what kind of pull I'm doing, whether it's this or a vertical pull or a horizontal pull. When you pull, you should think about your hands being hooks, like metal hooks, right? And your lat is the only thing that can help you pull the weight. You're not emphasizing the squeeze in your hand, you're not emphasizing forearm strength or bicep strength or shoulder strength, pretty much everything is disabled and think of it that way, everything is disabled except for your back. Your back should be what is pulling the weight. If it's not, it's something else taking over. Be alpha, drop the ego, get the gains. Don't mind the tricep extensions here guys, this was just a good clip I had um, in high definition to show you guys a little bit more of my back development and hopefully you know establish a little bit of credibility in your guys minds in terms of you know what I've used in order to develop my posterior side using these exercises consistently over the years and really applying the right methods as far as nutrition and exercise all together you know given the proper time so hopefully you guys learn something hopefully you guys, you guys can apply it and uh, like the video if you like it let me know what you think Later. Tell me apart, tell me apart, watch the bird.